In this design tutorial we're going to do an epic retro design. So hi guys, welcome back to a new Photoshop design tutorial. My name is Manny and in this tutorial I'm going to teach you guys how to do a really cool epic retro design here in Photoshop. Now, as you guys can see on the right hand side of our layers palette here already, we've got text, so this is basically just the design on top, and then we also have again the image here which I pulled from Google as well. And underneath we've got some guides which I'm going to show you guys in a moment. This is a little bit of a reference, so you can stop the video at home and actually get these numbers here with the percentages just from this video. So I don't need to type everything and I can fast forward it a little bit. But more about that in a second. So let's start right away just with the image here. I'm going to open everything. So basically going to run you guys through what I did with the image itself. So again, pulled it from Google actually, just a really cool retro bike there. And also really already like the blue going into orange. So I want to enhance this a bit more and also flatten this image a little bit. So first of all, I'm going to apply a adjustment levels layer. So let's head over to adjust. We're going to go to the Levels tab and I'm going to take the gray tones over here and just darken this a bit more. So basically we're just darkening the complete image a little bit further, something like 0.73. And as well now I want to go ahead and also flatten the image a little bit. So as you guys can see we've got a ton of layers here. Let's just move that to the top so you guys know where we're at. These were our before and this is now the second start. Again, I'm going to move back to adjustments now again, and we're going to go now to our curves adjustment layer over here. Select that. I'm going to make a bit of space. And now what we want to do is just flatten the image just a tiny bit. So first of all, I'm going to put an anchor point over here, here, and here. And I'm going to take this anchor point, I'm just going to pull it down or up. Okay, so as you guys can see, the blacks already start to fade a bit. But now we're going to pull them down a bit more, just give that a bit of contrast again. I'm going to fade them up a bit more, this guy a little bit up. Yeah, and that looks good so far already. Again, before and after, before and after. And now for the last step that I still want to do is just add a little bit of a color fill on top with another gradient. So again, I'm going to go to the bottom here, select the adjustment layers and go to gradient. And the gradient fill comes up right away, as you guys can see with a nice orange there. But I'm going to select a different gradient, just double tap on here. And I'm going to select this one over here, my favorite, a little bit of a purple blue going into orange. I'm going to hit OK. And first of all, position the angle a little bit differently, something like that, a little bit more up. I can also go onto the canvas right away here and push this up a little bit and down. OK, like so maybe, halfway through, and I'm going to hit OK. Now, that has been applied. Next, what I still want to do is go to our blending options here all the way down to color and now you guys can see it is just applying the color but I actually want to just take the opacity down a bit more something like just the 13 to 15 percent just a little bit there we go 10 percent that's cool great so we have a little bit of more of a blue touch also here into the orange as well I might as well also double click on here again and just change the angle up a little bit so we have more blue at the bottom but that's fine Okay, so again, I can delete these layers. You guys seen the process now, so that's only the process that I've done to the image. Again, here is the before and after. And if you want to still, you can add a bit of another blur effect right on top here so your design stands out just a bit more. But for this tutorial on this effect, I actually liked it that it had more sharpness instead of having a blur effect on top. Right, so let's head over now right away to the retro design uh, label here. So I'm going to turn this off. Make a bit of space again. We're going to close our image again. We're going to close our image group here. Okay, and right away as well the retro uh, design. So basically I'm going to create a complete new layer and this will be my layer on which I'll design. But now this is very important. I'm going to actually close the layer image or the group and call up guides again so you guys can already see the numbers. And I want to create exactly guidelines for these numbers. So basically you're going up to view new guide and I'm going to start right away out now with these first numbers which are vertical 20, 50 and 80 percent so let's write them down here 20 percent okay that was horizontal that was wrong so let's go to view new guide see oh, I also still do mistakes again 20 percent over here 
Okay, that's number one. Let's go to new guide again. And you're going to repeat this process over and over until you've done all the numbers. Again, view, new guide, 80%. So that's basically the first process of ready establishing your whole little shape here that you want to create now in Photoshop. Now, we've done all the vertical. Now we're going to switch back to horizontal. We're going to start out with 50% as well. Okay. And we're going to go back to view, new guide once again, horizontal, yes, let's maybe start now with the top, 25%. Okay, we're going to go back to view, new guide, we're going to go to 30%. Next step, I'm always leaving a bit of a gap here, just a 5 millimeter gap. Okay, let's go to view, new guide, 70%, and last one, 75%. Okay, so you guys kind of get the point and you guys can also pause the video here to get the dimensions. So let's switch back on our image layer and you guys can see now we've got the guide. So basically what I want to do now is create this cool shape here that we had before. And this is exactly the point for the shape. Let's turn this off, go back to layer number six and we're going to select the pen tool. If you guys are also new to the pen tool, have a look on the channel. I've created another tutorial for you teaching you how to work with the pen tool. So very simple. I'm going to put a first anchor point over here, next anchor point over here, then again an anchor point over here. We're going to go all the way down to here, combining another anchor point over here, over here, and then again completing it via the last slash the first one put it over here and you've created a cool path over here. You can now simply hit right click and also say make a selection out of this. So again make a selection, zero feathering, yes, okay. So now we've also created a cool selection. Basically what we're going to do is head over to the marking tool, hit right click and just say here fill. I'm going to fill this up with white content. So again under the contents area white, okay. And we're going to press Command-D. I'm working with a Mac, so if you're a Windows user, please press Control when I say Command. Okay, Command-D, get out of the selection. And if you want, you can also go back to View and clear the guide. So you can see a bit more of the aspect that you're doing here with your design. But I actually forgot a small step. Let's quickly go back in our History panel here to Deselect. And what I still want to do is just create another guideline here. Just very randomly somewhere over here. I think I'm going to place a bit of a selection over here and cut that piece out. I'm going to show you guys in a minute what I mean. Let's actually go right ahead and do it. I'm going to select again the rectangular marking tool and just going to create a really small selection over here. Something like that. And you, I'm going to do this totally out of my hand now. You guys can go ahead again and create some new guides for that. I'm being a bit lazy actually. So again, I've created a small selection here. I'm going to hit actually just delete now so I'm deleting that little strip out of my shape then again with the marking tool I'm gonna move the shape all the way down somewhere over here and I'm looking again just with my eye if it's right into the right position again maybe a little bit more up and I'm gonna hit delete again and command D get out of the selection so we made two stripes already and deleted those in our shape Again, I'm going to go to view and say clear guides. Okay, let's zoom out a little bit. And then we've got our first shape already. Now, for the next step that I want to do is basically add a font here and a little bit of a text into the center. So I'm going to go and take the text tool and make a nice big selection over here like so. And we're going to write now retro. Great. And already we have the pretty good font that we wanted. And basically this font, you can also find that again in the description down below. I've linked it there for you guys, but it's also called Park Lane over here in the top. You guys can also find it again on the font.com and use it for free. Okay, so we've written our text here. I'm going to make it a bit bigger, just a slight bigger. Okay, a little bit more like 76 point something. That's okay. I'm going to accept it and move it just a bit into the center with my cursor again. Okay, like so. And that's great. But now I still want to cut out the shape actually in the background. So how to do that? I've showed that again earlier last week in a tutorial from the Shorties tutorial series. So basically you're going to head over to your text layer. You're going to hit right click and say create a work path. So create a work path. Again now you're going to go over to the pen tool. Hit right click again on the pen tool here and say make a selection. Make a selection, zero feathering, okay. And now we've got a pretty good selection just around the text. 
Now without working again with the text we can actually turn this off. We can go back to our shape layer which is layer number six here and we can just press delete. So this means we've cut out the font now basically from our shape and it's pretty accurate and really really sharp. Again I'm going to press command D Windows users please use control. I'm going to zoom in and you guys can see it's super sharp and nice and neat. Great so it looks really really good. Great, so that step I'm going to repeat now again once more. I still want to write something a little bit down here, maybe since 2014 or since that, or maybe you have another slogan. So again, I'm going to select the text tool and I'm going to make a small selection over here. And I'm just going to write in capital letter since 2014. Okay, you guys can't see it because it's too big at the moment. I'm going to press Command A to select the complete text and head over here to the top and select Helvetica Neue which is again a very very thin font. You guys can also find that in the description or on the font.com and maybe let's just make it super small so we can actually see it. So over here since 2014 that looks great the size is good 10 pixels and we're gonna go with regular not ultra light. I also like ultra light looks really nice and neat but I'm actually gonna go for this tutorial with regular or maybe light. Light looks actually a little bit better. Okay, accept it from the top. Again, we're going to move it into the right position. Just literally with the cursors again with your mouse or move tool. Okay, and zoom out a bit. And we're going to repeat the process again. Right click on here. Again, create work path. Again, select the pen tool. Hit right click and say make a selection. Zero feathering. You can turn it off. Go back to the shape layer. Hit delete and command D, get out of the selection. And you guys can see also in the background it looks nice and green so it has cut it out really nicely. Great, so that's basically it again. I can also delete these old ones. I actually want to keep them for maybe future use. I'm going to turn it down here. Last step again, the shape layer. We can just rename it again to shape and as well take the opacity just a little bit down, maybe like 80%. Let's have a look before I also had it around about 82% pretty much the same yeah. So again 80 to 82% just so that the background shines through just a little bit. And there you go a super quick design how to do a retro design in Photoshop. So yeah there you guys have it a quick easy retro design. So thanks again for watching if you have any friends who are new to this share it with them. If you like this tutorial don't forget to hit me up there with a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys all in the next tutorial. Bye bye guys.